Oh my gosh, there's so many car parts everywhere. But since when has that ever been a bad thing? What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I'm so glad you could join me today. Those boxes are a sneak peek into a future video and the series. Today we're going to be doing another part of getting the M3 out the snuff. You might notice the hood is pop. Last week we did a camshaft position sensor and the check engine light is back. So that didn't fix it. Today I have this. This is an air intake temperature sensor. Here is your part number. For those of you who need it. So we are going to go ahead and I'm going to show you an in-depth tutorial on how to replace that on your BMW E36. The tools you will be needing are a 3 8 driver ratchet. Well, mine's 3 8 driver. Really, what you need is a 10 millimeter socket. This is going to be for your throttle body bolts. A flathead screwdriver. A flashlight. I mean, this is optional, but uh, you really should have a flashlight for this job. And then some picks. This part may not be required. I would definitely recommend, I mean, these picks were like $5 at Harbor Freight. I would definitely recommend having some picks because the last thing you want is to get in there and realize you need them. If your air intake temp sensor is seized in place, you're gonna need these picks to get the clip off in order to pull, unplug it, and then eventually pull the sensor out. Without these, that, will, that task will be literally impossible. So get yourself a decent set of picks. And then lastly, an extension. This one is way too long. I'm kind of just using this as a placebo since I don't actually have a small extension. This is also for the throttle body bolts. If you have a ratchet with an adjustable head like I do, you probably get away without it. I normally don't use one, but I'm going to put it on here because most of you are going to have normal ratchet and you're going to need an extension. Get one that's like maybe about from where my finger is to the right end. It doesn't need to be very long. You just need enough to kind of be able to get into the crevice where the throttle body will sit. So now we got tools out of the way. Step one is you're going to disconnect your mass airflow sensor and the uh, purge valve. I think that's what that is. But anyway, you're gonna disconnect it and you're gonna take your wires, just put them over here. Next step, no, actually, if you have an air box, you're gonna have two bolts here by the cruise control, or if you don't have one, you're still gonna have two bolts here. And then you're gonna have two clips that look just like this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a flat head and we're gonna pop these off. And then if you have an air box, you take it out. I'm actually gonna leave this in here because I don't need the space to get out of the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So now we got this disconnected. Your next step is going to be to pull your mass airflow sensor out. So you can just take a flat head or Phillips or a socket, it really doesn't matter. You're just getting this whole clamp off. Now, if you have a stock car, you're not going to have this weird adapter thing here. It's just going to be probably this guy. But I'm going to take these off. But it basically, just you're taking the intake boot off. Take the intake boot off. Oh, and to get the intake boot off, you're going to disconnect this as well. You're just going to push down the metal clip and pull it out. All right, got the intake boot out of the way. And actually, I say take it off. You probably, for this job, honestly, could just leave it here. The reason I say that is because the under this is your idle air control hose, and it's kind of annoying to get on and off. I might, for now, we're just gonna leave this here. We might have to take it out later. But the next step is going to be to get the throttle body assembly off. Well, there's the traction control throttle body, and then there's your main throttle body here. These are both 10 millimeter uh, screws. So I got my 10 mil here. Basically what we're gonna do, we're gonna start with one and two over there. This piece is gonna come off and then I'll show you what we're gonna do for this big guy here. All right, so we got this guy off. Uh, something I noticed is it's pretty dirty around the mating surface here. So I'm actually gonna clean this off, but I'm gonna do that off camera. So now what we have is, this is your, there's a gasket here, which you can replace this while you're in there if you want. And then you have two or four bolts, sorry. One, two, there's another one down here. And then there's another one on that same spot on the other side. So we're gonna have to get these off. Also, don't forget to unplug it. Leave that guy just over there or something. It doesn't really matter. The, um, the intake temperature sensor is like right under here. So as soon as you take this off, you're gonna have access to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all four of these bolts off and I'll show you where that sensor is and how to replace it. 
Okay, so now we got this unbolted. As you can see, there's four there, four in the intake manifold. Note that with your screws, the two smallest ones are going to be for your, the first one you did, your traction tool throttle body. Then you're gonna have these two kind of more middle size screws. These are gonna be the bottom two. And then your longest ones are gonna be the top two that are in this thing. So this kind of slides on over your throttle body, kind of like Mickey Mouse ears. And it has obviously your two screw holes for your two small ones. But anyway, it's so coming over here. You can now see your intake time sensor. It's right there. I'll grab a photo and put it over me talking. So that's your intake time sensor in there. And then down here, you're gonna see a plug. Basically, I don't know if you really need to see, I'm pointing right at it. That plug is sticking up and the sensor is going up into the intake manifold. So what you're gonna do is feel around for a metal clip, kind of like the ones we did over here. It's got the little metal thing, you push down, unplug it. It's gonna kind of be oriented like this or maybe like this, I can't really remember. But look for this metal clip, feel around with your fingers and once you feel it, you're gonna push it down and you're gonna pull the connector out and you'll be able to get this air intake temp sensor out and then put your new one in. All right guys, so we are back. I've been putzing around with this for a little while and I finally fully understand how this works. Obviously the old sensor is no longer in there. So let's come over here. So this is the old sensor, which was original. It's part of why I was struggling a lot with it. And on this sensor, there is a, well, first of all, the plug has the metal clip like I was talking about, but on the sensor itself, there's this little tab here. And what you have to do to get it out is finger around for this tab push it down and then it'll pull out. If you don't do that, this sensor will not come out. It's not held in by friction, it's held in by this clip. Once you push this down, it'll come out super easy. I couldn't figure that out for a while and if you're struggling with it, this is probably your issue. But now I got a nice new one coming back over here. Quick tip that you can do. See, that's the clip right there. Grab yourself a pick set. And if you're noticing that you can't get the plug off, just pull the clip out and then use a ton of force with your hands. Since my sensor was original, the plug was basically seized onto the sensor and I had literally had to use everything I could to get that off. Just something to note if you're dealing with, you know, these 20 plus year old parts. But now that we got this in, I'm gonna go ahead and plug the new sensor in to the plug here. Make sure to put that clip back on there so it stays in, doesn't, you know, unplug while I'm driving. And we're gonna put this back together and see how she runs. All right guys, get everything back together. I'm gonna go hop in the car and start it. Turn the lights on so you can see the cluster. All right, moment of truth. Oh, well that sounds good. All right, let's go check it. Alrighty guys, I'd say that sounds pretty mint. So, if you guys learned something new, make sure to like and let me down in the comments below. If you have any questions about the DIY, sometimes I know I go kind of fast. Feel free to ask me, I love answering questions. But without saying anything else, I'll see you guys in the next one, bye.